This is the fifth Saturday of the season, and now we're okay. Anyway, the fifth Saturday of the season, and it's the third show. My f The first one I missed was, oh, I don't like that. Uh, bad, bad tooth pain. And I just missed this last week because I got the flu or something. It was I was in bed for six days continuously. I'm still feeling pr pretty puny. My, you know, wrist, uh, you can't really see, see it right here, but my wrist watch is so loose now. I've lost a lot of weight. But uh, I learned something. I haven't gotten my tooth treated yet after a month of trying, as you know from TV. Um, so today, we're, go ahead and put that other background behind me. The We're going to have a, a free speech yeah, go ahead and put the other one up. There we are. The topic today is old bummer care. Yeah, go ahead and put me on the side so you can read that a little more. You can, yeah, you're seeing what you do. There you go. <laughs> okay, so old bummer care. Well, I want to state for the record that I, you know, I don't blame Obama for it, but the fact of the matter is this is what results when you allow the corporate wallowing in government. The corporations that run these healthcare organizations, and the only thing they give a damn about is making money. Healthcare isn't even on their list. I mean, I'm not just disgruntled. I can tell you about what happened. See, for some snafu, I got put on to the healthcare, uh, the dental dental health care at Kaiser. But see, it turns out that they have some sort of a franchise arrangement, and it goes by zip code. And apparently they've violated that franchise agreement by even accepting me. Now, keep in mind, I showed you last time, I got my, uh, my health care card here, and it said, yeah, you might want to zoom in on this a little bit. I'll show, I'll show this here. My healthcare. Go ahead and and zoom in on that if you possibly can. And I want you to see right here where it says Kaiser Dental. You're not showing it on TV yet, but anyway. Oh, there you go. See, okay, so it says provider, health share slash Kaiser Dental. Okay, so I call up Kaiser, and. You know, now that everybody's satisfied, and that was in the first 10 days. You know, it took 10 days for them to figure that out. And I finally called up to get my emergency appointment. Now, you make appointments for emergencies. You don't know it's just going screaming. And uh, <clears throat> I got my appointment. And I went in, and they got all the way through x-rays and, and the doctor's examination of me, which I reported last time. And it turns out that what... What I surmise happened behind the scenes is they realized, oh my God, he lives in the wrong zip code. And we've got to do something about this. Can you just feed him a line of BS? Like, we don't really know the coverage, extent of your coverage. We know, they knew darn well that they weren't going to cover me for any reason. 
but they had to shine me on. And they sent me out packing, you know, and I've called and called and tried to get it straightened out and tried to get it straightened out. And the latest thing that comes in the mail, if I can find that. Oh, yeah, here we are. Okay, this is the, the, the latest one. It just came the last day of the month. And they, oh, this is the one from before. But the, the one that just came the last day of the month gave me, a, here it is, a brand new card. And we're going to need you to zoom in on this one too now. I haven't popped it out of the, out of the paper yet. It's this shiny color part right here that, where the card pops out. I could actually do that right now. But I'm just going to show you when I turn this around. And look how they solved that problem without ever talking to me one time. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and focus. Now look what it says here. Dental plan. Suddenly, miraculously, the last day of this month, after a month of trying to get trouble, I mean trying to get my health fixed, Health Share Willamette Dental. Okay, so now Willamette Dental, I guess I live in their <coughs> zip code franchise, and they were the ones that were supposed to serve me the entire time. Well, uh, I just got... Well, here's a request from Kaiser to know if I had any other health care or if there's anybody in my family that might have other health care. And uh, I haven't opened this one from Kaiser. It feels like I have a whole Kaiser card in it and everything, probably my health, health care. But the one that I was, that I just opened up that really ticked me off, but I expected it. Yeah, here we go. Remember, I got... Uh, I told you they went ahead and had, and Kaiser had x-rayed me, even that, oops, wrong zip code, elitist thing, right? Okay, so now go ahead and zoom in on that again. Now, see over here, $162 due, just like it's the total due now, $162, Kaiser Permanente. This statement is, okay, anyway. Limited oral evaluation, problem focus, $72. Intraoral, per, uh, I can't even read it, first radiographic image, it looks like the x-ray, $29. Pulp vitality test, one visit, $61. Total of $162. And they don't even have the, the integrity, the honesty to say, look, there was a bureaucratic mistake. This isn't your bill. This bill should be billed back through your other provider, Willamette Dental. I mean, that's obviously what needs to happen. But no, instead, the chicken shits decided that they're going to charge me for it, leave me in the lurch without even enough money to make my bills on a monthly basis, and they add another $162. Oh, you can't pay your bills? Well, here, have another $162 worth. Okay, and while I'm at it, now... Uh, to top things off, as if everything couldn't be bad enough, we get down to current events. I mean, I'm lying in bed, sick as a dog, and I'm looking for something that'll just give me a little encouragement, and I accidentally turn on the State of the Union address with that King Obama declaring that the Congress doesn't bind him anymore, and that all he has to do is make a signature. Okay, all right. Executive privilege! Wouldn't that be nice if you could cure the world? I hereby declare peace in every country in the world, Obama. I mean, or president. I mean, it would be nice if you could do that, wouldn't it? But that's not what he's doing with it. And uh, he's using it to try to figure out a way to take your guns again, I guess is one of the things that they're still working on. But if you happen to see any of the follow-up, our Attorney General, Eric Holder, was examined by, a, uh, you know, kind of a little bit of a sticky question session with some reporters, or uh, I don't know if it was Congress. I don't think the Congress had the balls, and I'm surprised the reporters did. But anyway, Eric Holder started giving the justification. They asked, what's the justification for this uh, uh, executive privilege nonsense that King Obama is trying to, I only call him king because that's a kingly power that he's declaring. He doesn't need any oversight, doesn't need any other power or privilege. He has it all right there. But Eric Holder gave uh, two or three lame, lame justifications that boiled down to some sort of 
a you know add-on that they put on some bill that got put through because they had to pay for teachers or whatever the heck it was. I'm I'm just being facetious there, but that's what happens. You know, you you've got to pay for you know if you don't if you don't vote for this bill, little children will die. And then at the back side of the bill, we're going to put on and we're going to this bill also puts thousands of dollars into the pockets of evil people, but. Children will die if you don't vote for it. So that's how they get these things through. Um, and it, it's not just an exaggeration, it's, it's for, but it, it is uh, sad. The, the bottom line with this health care issue is, you know, this is a perfect example of what is wrong with allowing raw corporate capitalism anywhere near essential health care. You don't let them anywhere near your food chain. You don't let them near your water. And you sure don't let them near your health care. Because look, these SOBs have spent the entire month of January, 31 days, leaving me in agony, be which they don't even care. They're oblivious to it. Like I said, the health care is down low on the list somewhere where they haven't even read it lately. In the meantime, they're trying to figure out who pays for the visit that they accidentally let me have. So don't, don't even think for one second that there's anything good about privatizing any essential human service. Sewer, water, you name it. Okay, well, I, <clears throat> I've got a, a video that we're going to play for the rest of this show. I, I'm all burned out now. You can hear it in my voice. I don't have the strength to continue. I blew it all in one opening. But here's Larry Pinckney, who is a former Black Panther, one of the originals. He was the information minister of the Black Panthers back then. And uh, he, we played this interview with him uh, almost a year ago now, maybe not quite that long, three quarters of a year. And... Uh, you know, it sounded like he was just bad-mouthing Obama, you know, and it was just put up by another bunch of white guys that don't like Obama, that want to be racist about things, you know, and that's what Oprah's trying to push now. If you don't like Obama, you must be a racist. It has nothing to do with whether or not you approve of slaughtering policies and lying and cheating and violating the Constitution, because, no, no, it's simply because you're a racist. So, anyway... I think this is worth listening to. This is Larry Pinckney, and they just signal me that they're ready to rock. Well, it's a telephone call or something. I don't really want to take a call right now. So let's go ahead and start that video. If I were speaking to Obama, I think that I would have to say, where is your heart? Where is your integrity? Where is your humanity? Do you know what those words mean? Do you have any concept of what those words mean? You, 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 have, you have used and abused and hurt all the people, including black people, and you continue to do so. You speak in your fancy language using your fancy rhetoric, but you continue to hurt the people nationally and globally. Are you human? I would have to ask you, Barack Obama, are you human? Do you even know what being human means? It's important to understand uh, for those of you who have not seen uh, The Obama Deception, the first uh, particular film, please check it out. Let's understand that the Obama Deception is much, much deeper than being merely an Obama Deception. In fact, what it is, is a continuation of the same old agenda, the same old disempowering manipulating and controlling agenda. Now why was it important? Why was it important uh, that Mr. Hope and Change, Mr. Barack Obama, now known as Drone Man in the year 2013, Obama, why was it important that 
uh, the power elite uh, push him to be uh, uh, top dog, as it were, you know, or maybe we should actually say top murderer. But anyway, why was it important? Well, it was important because they used this. Pigmentation. Oh, he's black. He's black. He's got to be okay. Excuse me? Think about that. This was used, this is how I often speak of how racism, I call it an introverted or inverted rather, an inverted racism, where Obama knew full well that he was being installed by the powers that be, whether they be left or whether they be right or whether they be liberal or whatever they want to call themselves. Obama knew full well that his job would be to continue the agenda for the power elite. To continue, and it, by the way, this power elite is both national and global. It's not just in the United States. In fact, it, it, it is a global power elite. It is an elite that I use the term a lot, blood sucks. They're blood suckers. You ever think about vampire? Every time I, 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 I decide to kick back and watch an old movie from the 50s or 60s and I watch uh, Bella Lugosi come out and, and uh, play the vampire, I can't help but think of this system. Because they're sucking the blood economically, politically, socially, culturally. They're sucking our blood in that sense. Um, Obama serves as, at this point in time, uh, the, 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 the number one blood sucker, or at least in terms of, of his usefulness, and I put the word usefulness in quotation marks, because he certainly is not useful for everyday black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. He is the antithesis, if you will, the antithesis of the needs, wants, and desires of the people. Uh, so let's remember that that deception is a continuation of the deception that started eons ago. But Obama was the right person, in quotation marks, at the right time to continue to dupe the people. That's why you had Republicans coming out, oh yes, Obama, Democrats, oh yes, Obama. Hey folks, whenever you see that, you better stop and think. You better stop and think. Because both of them, Democrats and Republicans, their, their so-called leadership, and I call it their misleadership, feed from the same corporate, national, and global trough. So the Obama deception is a deception against all of the people, nationally and globally. And I want you to keep that in mind. It's important that we keep that in mind. It's, it's a national and global deception. The wars, the perpetual wars that we have, the perpetual corporate hegemony, and all I mean by corporate hegemony is domination. Why is that? Did it happen by osmosis? No, it happened by design. This is... Hi, I just came right back. We'll go right back to Larry Pinkney in just a moment. I wanted to state for the record that I agree with what he's saying. Everything he's talking about makes sense to me, and everything that I've verified that he's said has checked out. I just want to be clear. I just had a caller call up and said, who's that black guy? And I said, where? I, that you're showing on TV right now. And I said, oh, that's Larry Pinckney. He's the former information minister of the, of the Black Panthers, the original Black Panthers. And, uh, you know, for the record, they were an honorable group that you could respect and you should read their writings. And the new Black Panthers are not an honorable group. And I don't give a damn if you read them or not. They're full of BS. So anyway, but this is Larry Pinckney, one of the original ones, and he's a good guy. But here's what happened when I, when I, she said, who's that? And I said, that's Larry Pinkney, da, da, da. And she says, oh, well, do you like black people? And I said, well, yes, don't you? And she, uh, uh, but, but, and click, thanks. What in this day and age? I mean, get over white and black. Listen to the Larry Pinkney. Here we go. Back to him. Going on by design. 
all right? We have to understand that it's not that complicated. Actually, it's very simple. You know, they say that the best tricks are the old tricks, and the old tricks are the best tricks. You know why? Because they work. But the old tricks stop working once people wake up, because you can't fool all the people all the time. And more and more people are waking up to this deception. And it is a despicable deception. All of us have been deceived, regardless as to what ideology we may think we adhere to. We have all been deceived. We have allowed ourselves to be deceived. And this just goes on and on and on uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a circle. It's cyclical. But what we have to do, break out of the box, break that cycle. We can do that. We've got to do that. You know, somebody once said that every generation needs a new revolution. No, that wasn't Malcolm X. That was Thomas Jefferson, and he was absolutely correct. It's important to understand that what we, and when I say we, I'm talking about we, everyday people of humanity, everyday ordinary people, are dealing with, is we're dealing with creatures, dare say a human, human creatures, who really lack, as in L-A-C-K, they lack the human qualities that all of us should have. In other words, no empathy, empathy, I didn't say sympathy, I said empathy for humanity. It's important to understand that the national global elite is aware that ultimately by dumbing us down, by clamping down on the free flow of information, by propagating disinformation, that ultimately uh, their blood sucking and by killing Mother Earth will lead to their own annihilation. Then why do they do it? Because, my friends, they are avaricious. Again, it's sort of like a vampire who sucks the blood. It's like it's, it, they have an insatiable appetite that can never, ever be filled. They are soulless, without soul, without soul. And all of us should have somewhere deep in our own human being, deep in our being, as humans, we should have souls. But we're dealing with an elite, a national and global elite, who lack that. Instead, they are willing to destroy us all, if only for the pleasure, ever so short-lived, of greed, of for trying to fulfill their insatiable greed, of taking over a world, even ultimately a world, that if we allow them to do it, will ultimately be destroyed by them. So it's our obligation to recognize and to understand that literally, quite literally, everything is at stake. These folks Though they may smile, just as Obama smiles, he smiles. But when I look at his smile, I see only death. I see only drone missiles. I see only lies and deceit. But it's not just Obama. It's all that he represents. Perhaps one of the most insidious and sadistic things about the continuation of this agenda uh, to, to, to control, to manipulate, to bloodsuck uh, people all over the world, including in this nation, on the part of Barack Obama and his minions, is the fact that this is well thought out. This is done in, in, in a fashion where people uh, have been so... Uh, insidiously divided. For example, let me, let me be very specific of what, what I mean by this. If George W. Bush had engaged in anywhere near the 
horrible atrocities. He carried out anywhere near those kinds of atrocities. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly no supporter of George W. Bush, but let's be real, let's be honest. Had he done that, why, you would have had liberals and progressives and the so-called left. Oh, they would have been out there saying, no way, you can't commit these cold-blooded murders, you can't do this, you can't do this. And they would have been right, except for one thing. Now that Barack Obama has not only done that, but he's gone far, far, far past. He has surpassed what Bush ever did, which was bad enough. He has surpassed that. Where are they? Where are these folks who, who supposedly cared about humanity? Where are these folks who supposedly had principles? This is what, again, we see playing out that fake, phony, left-right paradigm. We see it playing out. And this is also why the Obama deception was and continues to be, up to a point, so insidious. So very, very sinister and insidious. So let's remember that we collectively, and I say collectively, all I mean is across the board, that we are the ones who can, we're the only ones, in fact, who can break through, who can dispense with that deception. The Obama deception, no more. No more Obama deceptions, whatever name they may give it. No matter. And it's not about Democrat or Republican. It's not about blood-sucking. It's about all the people. All the people. That's what this is about. No one's sitting here, I'm not sitting here and saying, oh, vote Republican. By no means, I'm not saying that. I'm not sitting here saying, well, vote for a better Democrat. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, vote with your feet. Vote with the people. Everyday people who look and act and care and think and feel just like you of all colors, the colors of the rainbow, all of us. That's who we vote for and with. You know, I re it re I'm reminded of something that W.E.B. Du Bois said. He said, may God forgive us if we ever again vote Democrat or Republican. This was W.E.B. Du Bois. Look it up. Check it out for yourself. Understand that this, 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 this agenda, this agenda is still being carried out and the agenda remains the same. And under Barack Obama, it has become even worse. But the beauty the beauty of it is that we also have a potential, a potential now that we may not have had before. And that potential is to wake all of us up. Get out of that paradigm. I'm right wing, I'm left wing, I'm a liberal. How about just being a person? How about just being a populace? How about just having principles? Stick to your principles. Be principled about this struggle for all of humanity. Be principled about that, please. That's what this is about. Obama is, in my words, probably the most dangerous weapon that this century has yet seen. You know, the South African activist, uh, Steve Biko, said that the most powerful, most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And Steve Biko was absolutely correct. Indeed, in that respect, in that sense, Obama is indeed a weapon. He is a weapon against every day black, white, brown, and yellow people. Obama has demonstrated uh, the, the uh, ability, and I use that word in quotation marks, to t distort everything. In other words, let me give, use an example. Uh, when it comes to war, somehow Obama makes war seem to be not only acceptable, but absolutely necessary, imperative, even good, if you will, all in the name, simultaneously, all in the name of saying 
He's anti-war. He's anti this. He's anti that. Virtually everything Barack Obama says he opposes, he supports. And we need to understand that. That's why he is a weapon, such a, an insidious and powerful weapon. We have to look at him for what he is, not for what we want him to be. Too many people got caught in the trance looking at Obama, not for what he is, but for what they wanted him to be. We have to look at Obama, and people just like him don't care about what their color or their gender is, for what they really are versus what we had hoped they would be. So this weapon, which he is, he is a weapon against everyday ordinary people of all colors. This is the weapon, to borrow the FBI's infamous term, this is the weapon that needs to be neutralized. And when I say neutralize, I mean so that it not be misconstrued. I mean politically. We must come, and conscious-wise, we must come to an understanding that he must not be allowed to continue to hold us, uh, to mesmerize us. We, we've got to get out of this, this, this ridiculous, dangerous trance that we're in. No more weapons. And Obama right now, presently, is probably the most powerful weapon against everyday people. You know, the, 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 when I think back uh, to, for example, John F. Kennedy, JFK, uh, and I'm certainly not romanticizing uh, the Kennedys, period, be it, John F., be it John F. K. or Robert Kennedy. However, I will say this. Uh, there were certain fundamental things that uh, John F. K. did attempt, uh, JFK did, did attempt to do uh, that did have a fundamental effect of helping, assisting uh, the poor in this country, the poor of all colors, all colors. Uh, also, there were fundamental things that uh, Kennedy in this respect uh, did, for example, uh, where the CIA wanted uh, Kennedy to go and, in quote, smash Cuba, despite international law, despite all kinds of things, Kennedy said no. Now, again, I want to emphasize, I am not romanticizing Kennedy, but when we compare, for example, uh, this uh, president, this former president, with this current president, one has to ask, have we moved forward or have we moved backwards? Clearly, we have moved backwards and we're moving rapidly backwards and we will continue to move backwards until we break free of this Obama trance. Right now, Obama is the best they have and we have to reject that. When I say the best, I don't mean in a good or positive sense. I mean he is the most effective weapon that they have, the, the power elite, the globalists, against the people of this nation and the world. Once we deal with him, it becomes far less difficult. It will be difficult, but far less difficult to deal with their next tricks, because they always have tricks. But we, our trick is not a trick. What we have is each other, and it's way more of us than of them. What about Africa? What about what Barack Obama has done and is doing in Africa? The mother of civilization, all civilization. What about Africa? What's happening? Well, you know, in the, the, the first uh, film, The Obama Deception, it was predicted, and rightly so, it has been proven to be correct, that uh, Obama and his minions would be attacking Africa, would be developing war plans and carrying out those war plans. Did that happen? Did it actually happen? It most certainly did. Think back with me for just a few moments. Think back to Libya. Libya on the African continent. Think back to how this sovereign nation was bombed to smithereens. 
By whom? George W. Bush? No. Barack Obama. Think about it. Think about the fact that not only in Libya, in North Africa, but also in Somalia, drones are being used to indiscriminately bomb. And there's no such thing, by the way, as a smart missile or a smart bomb. Only dummies think that they're smart missiles and smart bombs and smart drones. But being bombed to smithereens, the massacres that resulted for example, in Libya, North Africa, as a result of the destabilization by Barack Obama and his minions. The, the, the horrible human disaster where we're talking 40 to 50 to 100,000 people being massacred. Do you think for an instant Obama didn't know that this is what would occur? Of course he knew. The whole thing was meant to destabilize Africa, okay, whether it was Libya, North Africa, Somalia, East Africa, whether it was uh, um, Syria, think about what's happening in Syria today, Syria being very, very, very uh, um, close to the African continent, by close I'm speaking in geographical terms. Think about these things. AFRICOM, have you heard of AFRICOM? AFRICOM, the militarization by the Obama regime of the African continent. The militarization for the purpose of using African armies to kill each other acting as proxies for the power elite of the US. In this case acting as proxies, proxies if you will, for Barack Obama. Now there were those uh, back in 08, 2008, 2009 when we predicted that these things, or it was predicted that these things would take place. Who said, oh, no, not Obama. <laughs> not Obama, you don't understand. <laughs> He's black. Think about it. Think about the bloodshed. Think about the destabilization of, of, of the mother continent. Think about it. And she's our mother, just like this planet is our mother Earth. Think about what has been done. That was a crass and continues to be a crass deception. Remember, if you, if you haven't looked up AFRICOM, look it up, Google it, A-F-R-I-C-O-M, AFRICOM, the proxy for the United States to continue to militarize the African continent, to militarize it so that Africans are killing Africans. So you keep the continent divided. You keep uh, uh, the people manipulated and controlled. There are pogroms that are going on. Pogroms, that's right, P-O-G-R-O-M-S, going on right now throughout various parts of Africa. Thanks to whom? Barack Obama, his regime. We need to understand, be we black, white, brown, red, or yellow, we need to understand that what is at stake here is our very existence. I urge you, to give serious thought to that. And again, I reiterate once more, don't be deceived again. There's a song back in the day, uh, I think it was sung by a group called The Who. I love the song, we don't get fooled again. Let's not get fooled again. Let's not be deceived again. When we think of our mother Africa, and I do say our mother Africa, I don't care what your color is. When we think of our mother Africa, think of Barack Obama and the devastation and the lies that this man has told and the devastation that he has brought upon humanity and upon our mother continent, our mother continent, and our planet, Mother Earth. Doesn't have to be this way. Don't have to be deceived again. And as the song from back in the day said, we won't get fooled again. You know, the question comes to mind, well, how can we avoid being deceived again? What's to stop us from succumbing to another uh, deception? Let's go back to that word, I'll go to the word principles. If we have principles, if we stick to our principles, however challenging that may be, and sometimes it will be challenging, 
But if we stick to those principles, we can avoid being sucked down the toilet. We can avoid uh, being once again duped. Let's maintain our principles. Let's be honorable with each other, however difficult and challenging it may be. Because in the final analysis, that's how we will avoid yet another deception. You know, one of the things that I feel extremely uh, honored, delighted, happy to have experienced in my life was I had the opportunity to see and meet uh, Brother Malcolm X, uh, El Haj Malik El Shabazz. Uh, this was back in the day, as I would say, way back in the day. This was actually around 1961. Uh, I was a youngster, uh, about 11 or 12 years old, and um, was, had, I had the opportunity to be taken to Morgan State College in Baltimore, Maryland, now Morgan State University. And uh, my cousin, um, who was at the time a student at that particular institution, uh, was among the students who brought uh, Brother Malcolm in to speak. Uh, I was there, as I said, um, and saw Brother Malcolm, had the chance to, to listen to him, speak with him. Um, and the thing that really touches me to this very day about uh, that conversation uh, was Malcolm's for realness. One of the reasons that I admire Malcolm so much um, and this is not about the cult of the personality, this is just about human being to human being. One of the reasons I admire Brother Malcolm is because he evolved. When, when Malcolm uh, came to realize that he was mistaken about something, he was human enough to say, I was mistaken about that. I'm using the example of how Malcolm grew from being a mere cultural, a cultural black nationalist to an internationalist, to uh, someone who believed in uh, the need for humanity to come together as a whole. And what I remember when I saw Malcolm uh, was his, his humanity. Malcolm had a smile that would blow your mind, as we used to say back in the day. He could walk into a room and you could be engaged in an intense conversation and Malcolm would smile and you would just be engulfed by his humanity, as was I. Um, being as young as I was, I read a lot. I was an avid reader. My, my parents were both school teachers, poor, but school teachers, so they believed strongly in reading, in studying, in debating, uh, etc. Anyway, at that young age, I could sense that Malcolm was first and foremost a human, and he spoke not down to me, but he spoke with me. And uh, to this very day, decades later, many decades later, I think that's what I think of when I, when I think of Brother Malcolm, a man of great humanity, a man of wit, of intellect, but most of all, a human who evolved constantly. Which leads me into uh, a topic that is sometimes very difficult for me to uh, to discuss, uh, and that is COINTELPRO, C-O-I-N-T-E-L-P-R-O, the counterintelligence program. The counterintelligence program, of course, being a program that was set up, uh, begun actually back in the 50s, it was intensified in the 60s and 70s and continued, and I would submit to you that COINTELPRO continues today. Now, what was COINTELPRO? COINTELPRO was a uh, um, program that was set up by the federal government throughout this nation, not just one part, but throughout the United States, to quote, to frame, to discredit, to neutralize, to imprison, and in many, many cases, to murder political activists across the board. Not only black political activists, but black, white, brown, red, yellow. People in this country, citizens of this country, who dared to challenge, to question, to oppose the, the, the narrative, the propaganda, if you will, of, of the U.S. government. Now, this is the year 2013. Does COINTELPRO still exist? I would submit to you 
adamantly that COINTELPRO does exist, in fact has been tweaked, it has morphed into something even worse, even stronger. Uh, whether we're talking about how COINTELPRO, uh, COINTELPRO has been put into uh, the Patriot Act, how COINTELPRO has been put into the NDAA, the so-called uh, National Defense Authorization Act, particularly provision 1021, how COINTELPRO has been applied and put into drone man Barack Obama's kill list. That's right. We have a president, think about it, who has his very own secret kill list. That means, brothers and sisters, you can be killed in your home. You can be killed in, while you're doing shopping. Your loved ones can be set up and or killed. Uh, that's the reality. Now, does that mean that we, we should become paranoid? Absolutely not. Absolute, absolutely not. But what we need to do is we need to understand that COINTELPRO exists and it is functioning. Uh, and in fact, in the year 2013, this year, uh, with uh, Barack Obama, whom I call the drone missile man or the drone man, the kill list man, it is worse now than ever before on every level. And it affects all of us, not just black folk, white folk, brown folk, all of us, black, white, brown, red, yellow, across the board. The only way that we can effectively uh, resist COINTELPRO is to, one, be aware of it. If we're going to put out a fire, we have to be aware that the fire is engulfing our home, that the fire is raging. So before we can address that and put that fire out, we have to first be aware of it. It's the same with uh, the counterintelligence program. We are told that uh, we have a constitution in this country. Well. What we have in this country in this year of 2013 is we have a piece of paper that has in very large part been made null and void by both Democrats and Republicans and definitely, most definitely, by the current chief executive and commander-in-chief of the, of the United States Armed Forces, none other than Mr. Barack Obama. So if one has a constitution, it is irrelevant if it is not applied. What good is that? It, what good is there to have a constitution uh, if, if that a constitution is not a living constitution? It's not really applied. Freedom of speech, freedom of organ to, or, to organize, freedom uh, uh, to, to be able to have dissenting views. These things are incredibly important. These thi are the very kinds of things that COINTELPRO seeks to, in the words of the FBI, neutralize, to destroy. So. I think it's incumbent upon all of us, all of us throughout the United States and indeed throughout the world, but I'm pri primarily referring to people in this, in this nation, it's incumbent upon us to understand the danger that we are in, the peril. We must first recognize our peril in order to do something about it. And we can do something about it. We can do something about it. We must do this collectively. It's time to get past that phony, fake, farce, left-right paradigm. That's how they keep us united uh, or disunited because they don't want us to be united. That's how they keep us disunited. They keep us in disarray. They keep us divided. They keep us in fear of each other. It's like a, a ping pong ball in a ping pong game. We're the ping pong ball. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Only brothers and sisters, we're the ball. We're the ones who are going back and forth. And this corporate stream media, uh, ABC, CBS, PBS, Fox News, the corporate stream media, all of them are about putting forth a narrative that is meant to keep us divided, controlled, manipulated, in fear of each other, and, and, and this is what we have to do something about. And only we, from the bottom up, not from the top down, not from the top down, from the bottom up, um, we have to recognize, I look at it like a pyramid. The pyramid has a huge, huge base at its bottom. 
the top, the point, is, is quite small. It's what I call the power elite, the national and global power elite, who control our lives. Not only do they control our lives in a physical sense, but first and foremost, they control our lives psychologically. Make sure we think a certain way, if you, indeed you can call it thinking, because they really don't want us to critically think. They want us to be numb. They want us to, to, to act, as I say, like Robotrons, without even realizing that we're acting like Robotrons, robots, okay? But again, I go back to the power of the people. Back in the day, in the original Black Panther Party, not to be confused with the so-called new Black Panther Party. In the original Black Panther Party formed in October of 1966, um, the party said then, and I still say now, all power to the people. What did we mean by that? We meant that ultimately all power, all power rests with each of us. But the only way we're going to be effective is to reach out to each other. Whether we agree or disagree, we'd sure as heck better come to the recognition or come to a recognition that without each other we are powerless. But with each other we are strong. So having said those things, I want to emphasize that COINTELPRO does continue today. The counterintelligence program did not go away. We have to ask ourselves, what would Brother Malcolm X have to say? What would Malcolm say about Obama's drones in Somalia, Pakistan, Bahrain, uh, um, Afghanistan, so, so forth and so on? What, what would Brother Malcolm say? What would Brother Malcolm say about Obama's signing of the NDAA with special emphasis on the provision section or provision 1021. What would Brother Malcolm say? What would Brother Malcolm say about Obama's secret kill list, murder list, M for murder? What would Brother Malcolm say? Malcolm said that Right is right and wrong is wrong, no matter who says it or who does it. Obviously, that in and of itself tells us that Malcolm would be repulsed, repulsed by the, the despicable, hypocritical, deceitful actions of Barack Obama and his minions. Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. We, too should be, should find Obama's actions and his deception to be repugnant. We, we should not allow his deceit to trick us anymore. In the words of Brother Malcolm, we have a debt to all of humanity. And I'm sure, I'm sure you are too, very sure that Brother Dr. Martin Luther King would have said the same thing. He said, didn't he, to judge people based on what? The content of their character, not the color of their skin. It is time for us to actualize that. Both Malcolm and Martin would be right there with all of us, irrespective of our color. So what would... Malcolm say about Obama? I think you know full well that Malcolm would say he is unacceptable to humanity. You know, if, not if, when we break free of and from the trance that Obama has us in, this Obama trance, then we are capable of breaking free from all of these trances. Because the Obama trance is probably the single most powerful, debilitating one that has yet been brought about in the 21st century. So we have to, to, to break that trance. You remember when, when you were a kid and you first turned on the television and how magical it was to you? Wow, you looked at the screen and you saw people, you saw vehicles, you saw all kinds of things on that screen. It was like it was magic. 
But then, as you grew older, you realize that, no, it really wasn't magic at all. It was technology, not magic. You broke the trance. This is what we must do with Barack Obama. Obama was successfully, he and his handlers, to put people in a trance. We must turn off that television set, euphemistically speaking as the example I just gave, and break that trance. Understand that it's not magic. It's a trance, or as Malcolm X would say, it's Novocaine. Get out of it. Get out of it. Break that Obama trance, because once we do that, it becomes so much easier to break the other trances that they, and who do I mean by they, the power, the national and global power elite, the globalists, are going to be pushing more trances toward us, but it's going to be far more difficult because we have already, or will have, already broken free from the Obama trance. Why is it that we are in this nation, and in many nations throughout the world for that matter, why are we continuing to uh, find ourselves in a developing de facto police state? Why? I mean, is this just happening, or is it happening by design? I think that when we give it serious thought, we find out that it is, in fact, happening by design. Uh, the globalists, those who want to control humanity, have an agenda, and that agenda is to do what? That agenda is to squeeze us in every conceivable manner, politically, economically, socially, culturally, spiritually even, to squeeze us. That is the global agenda. Now, this is why we see, and there's a positive side, and the positive side is this. Obviously, people throughout the world are beginning to wake up. People throughout uh, the United States are beginning to wake up. We've got a lot more waking to do, a lot more awakening to do. But it has begun. Again, I go back to the words of Thomas Jefferson, every generation needs a new revolution. And this uh, response is by the global, the globalist, the global elite, the power elite, is to do what? Is to clamp down, to clamp down, to clamp down on people's civil rights, human rights, I like the word human rights because we're all first and foremost human. And that's the emphasis. That's where the emphasis, I think, really should be on human rights. But it is showing they are, they, are, they who am I talking about? The global elite, the power elite, nationally and globally, are re reacting to people awakening. Sometimes you know, they, they say that, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what the saying was, but it goes something like,